Hello, this is Brenna from Shobi, and today we're going to look at how to use Shobi as a student. To access Shobi, you can head to the Apple App Store and download the Shobi app to use on an iPad or an iPhone, or you can go to your web browser to my.shobi.com to access the web app. The web app is the place to go if you're going to be using Shobi on a laptop, a desktop, an Android device, a Chromebook, or any other non-Apple platform. To log into your Shobi account, you'll require a username and a password. Your school may already have set up your Shobi account for you. If they haven't, though, you can click Sign Up for Free and follow the instructions to sign up as a student. There are also other sign-in options that your school might be using. You can click Sign In with Google to sign into Shobi with your Google account, or click Other Sign-in Options if you'd like to sign in using Microsoft or FIDA. Today I'm going to use a username and a password, though. So you just enter those into the field here, and then click Sign In. When you first enter your Shobi account, you'll see there's a sidebar on the left and a big open space on the right. The sidebar on the left is where you're going to navigate between classes and assignments in Shobi. To begin with, though, I just want to quickly show you your profile information so you know where to go to make any changes in your account. In the top right, you'll see your name with a little icon next to it. Click here to open your Shobi profile. You can make changes to any of the information displayed here, so you can add a profile picture, change the way your name is displayed, or update your login information if you need to. If you click on the Sign In Options button here, you can also turn on and off those different sign in options that we discussed on the home page, and you can change your password as well. You can also click into Notification Preferences to change how and where you receive notifications from Shobi. So you can see you can customize different kinds of notifications uh, based on the different activities. Keep in mind that student accounts do not require an email address in Shobi, but if you would like to add an email address, you can do that after you've logged in, and that way you can set up to receive email notifications. So once you're logged into your Shobi account, joining classes is how you're going to access the material that your teacher is providing in Shobi. You can see that I already have one class in my list here, Block 4, English Language Arts 5. I can join as many classes as I need to, though, and to join a new class, all you need to do is click on the blue plus icon and enter the class code. The class code will be a five-digit combination of numbers and letters that belong to the specific class your teacher has created. Your teacher should provide the class code to you at the beginning of the class, and then you only need to enter it one time and you'll be connected to the class for the rest of the semester, the year, or however long your teacher is using the class for. I've already joined a class here though, so let's take a look at it. Once I click into a class, the next thing I see inside the class is a collection of assignments. Your teacher will create assignments for you to complete work in Shobi, so you can see the different assignments that exist for this Block 4 English Language Arts 5 class in the sidebar now. Let's take a look at one of the ones that has already been assigned, this Introduce Yourself worksheet. If I click in here, I'll see that my teacher has provided some text instructions as well as some different files for me here. So the instructions are to use Shobi's annotation tools to complete the worksheet. I can click on that worksheet to open it up. You can see at the top of the page there are a number of different buttons here, and these are Shobi's annotation tools. We can review them together. The first one is the pen tool. So I can use the pen tool to write or draw on the page here and complete any work that I need to. If you click on the very bottom color portion of the pen, you can also change the pen to a different color or to a different line thickness and keep working. Next to the pen is the highlighter. You can also click on the highlighter to change the color and the line thickness, and then you can draw on the page with transparent marks. I also have an eraser here next, so if I'd like to erase any material if I've made a mistake. And then the next option is pinned text notes. So a pinned text note allows you to click onto the page and write any text that you would like. And then when you save that, 
on the little profile image next to it and you can collapse that text down. I can now drag it around to any other part of the page so I can move it to wherever is appropriate. The next item here is the pinned voice note, which is very similar to the pinned text note, but it allows you to record yourself speaking directly onto the page. So just click anywhere on the page to start and then click the record button and you can now record yourself. So perhaps you're going to read a passage of text back to your teacher, or you have a question that you aren't necessarily sure how to write, so you'd like to verbalize it instead. You can record anything you need to using the voice notes on Shobi, and then you can save it, listen to it back, make any changes before saving it down. And then it's just the same as the pinned text note there in that once it's saved, you can click on the little icon there to collapse it and drag it and move it around on the page. The last annotation tool is the text box. So I can click anywhere on the page to write text. There we go. And then click away when I'm done. I can change the size of that text box, move it around, and make it contextual. And then when I click away, it'll appear as text on the page. Sorry, that's not a great example there, but you can see how the feature works. Once I'm finished, click on Done in the top corner, and it will save all of your annotations. Now when your teacher opens this worksheet, they will be able to see all of the work that you've done on it. If you would like to upload work that you've completed in another app, or maybe you completed it using a pen and paper and have taken a photo, you can click on the plus sign to upload other files into your Shobi assignment. So I can upload files from OneDrive, from Google Drive, from Dropbox, from my computer. I can also record a voice note here, so that again would be recording yourself speaking directly so that your teacher can listen to it. I'm just going to upload something from my computer here. I'll upload another Jurassic Park image since I already have one in there as an example. Now you can see it's completed and I have that new file here in my Shobi assignment. You can also write in the text box at the top and post material or questions here. So as you can see, I've posted one question a little bit earlier today. Keep in mind that any material that you upload or post inside an assignment is only going to be visible to your teacher. So you can feel free to ask them questions and to share any work that you have without worrying about any of your classmates seeing it. If you are wanting to post material somewhere that your classmates can see, you can use Shobi's class discussion feature. Now the class discussion is available only if your teacher has decided to utilize it, so let's look into the class discussion here and see. The class discussion is a space where all the students and teachers in a class can talk with each other. So they can, again, post text here or upload any other different file types and everybody in the class will be able to see. The catch here, though, is that the teacher has the ability to turn the class discussion off if it's not a time to be utilized. So you can see at the very top, this class discussion currently says it is paused, so that means students are not able to make any new posts. So I can see this reminder that my teacher has left here about an upcoming field trip that our class has, but I can't make any new posts or reply back to that comment. If the class discussion feature were to be turned on, you would see the same blue plus icon and the text box here to add new material to the class discussion. Now there are a few other assignments that currently exist within this class right now, so I'd like to take a look at those so you can understand some other elements of how Shopee works. We already looked at the Introduce Yourself worksheet and completed some work there, but we also have a reading assignment available below. If I click on this assignment, you can see there's a little eye icon to the left or to the right, sorry, of the sidebar. And that means this uh, assignment is currently in view only mode. So that means my teacher has provided material here. You can see there's another worksheet that we're going to complete as well as some instructions. But my teachers decided that this assignment is not yet ready for us to work on. You can see as well that the due date is set to be later. So maybe this is something we're going to get started on next week. Your teacher has the ability to change the access point for students in any assignment, which means sometimes your assignments are open and ready for you to edit and work on them, and sometimes you can't uh, interact with the assignment and you can just see a preview of what material is coming up next in the class. 
So currently this reading assignment is not available yet. There's a little banner at the top that says it is currently locked. So I can view everything in here, but I can't upload anything new until my teacher unlocks the assignment for me to work on it. Lastly, you'll notice underneath the class discussion, there's also a blue folder. Sometimes your teacher might decide to organize assignments further into folders in Shobi. If you were to click into a particular folder, any assignments that live in that folder would be held inside. There aren't any assignments in this homework folder quite yet, but once they're added by my teacher, I'll be able to access them here, just the same way that I can access these two assignments that don't belong to a folder. The next thing I'd like to take a look at is the portfolio in Shobi. So if I click back into a particular assignment, you'll see that this worksheet has a little yellow star icon next to it, which means that this piece of work has been added to my student portfolio. The portfolio feature in Shobi allows you to save significant pieces of work, grades, or any other files uploaded into Shobi in a space outside of the assignment. This is a great space to use for your parents to view the work that you've been doing, or for you to keep copies of work that you'd like to review again in the future. To add material to a portfolio, you can click on the little um, dot icons next to the item, or if you're on the iPad, you can swipe from right to left to access that star icon, and you can see there are some options here for the portfolio. So if I wanted to put this uh, Jurassic Park picture in my portfolio, for example, you can click Add to Portfolio there. This particular item was added to my portfolio by my teacher, so I can't remove it myself. Now if I head back out to my main page where my classes are, you can see my portfolio is available at the top as well. And if I can click into that, I can see those two items that were added to my portfolio. The portfolio feature is one that your teacher may or may not choose to use, and it may be different from teacher to teacher as well. So check with your teacher about whether or not the portfolio is going to be utilized for your class, and if so, you can choose to save significant pieces of work here. The last place we're going to look in Shobi is the Groups feature. Again, this is something that your school or your teacher might use, and they might not. Groups is a place where multiple users in Shobi can collaborate on material together. So again, it is a public space and anything that you share in groups will be viewable to all of the group members. You can join a new group in the same way that you join a class by using a group code, which again is going to be a combination of five numbers and letters. So let me enter a group code for a new group I'd like to join here and then click join. You'll see I'm now joined to this field trip planning group. Groups can be comprised of students, teachers, and parents, or any combination. And you can see that the space in a group looks very similar to the space in um, the assignments, as well as the class discussion. There's a plus icon here, so you're, um, you're able to upload any different materials that you'd like to, or any file types. And you can also use the text box to post any questions or comments. All the members of the group will be able to see everything that has been uploaded so you can work together. Maybe you're going to use a group to collaborate on a project with other students, or like this example, you're working to prepare for a field trip that's coming up for the class. So the groups are a really flexible feature and if your school or your teacher is choosing to utilize them, you can access them just by clicking into the groups tab at the top of your sidebar. If you're using the iPad, the sidebar buttons here might be at the bottom instead. So that's a review of how to use Shobi as a student. I hope it was helpful, but if you have any questions or if you need to review any of the features, you can click on the blue plus icon in the bottom right of your screen to access our help website. So just click help topics there and you'll be directed to the Shobi support site where you can look up uh, instructions on how to use the different features or ask questions that you may have about getting the most out of Shobi. Thanks for watching this video.